Good morning, everyone. Myself, Murli Dharade. In this video, we are going to install Jeffrog in Linux. Linux is nothing but here Amazon Linux, M2S, Red Hat, Fedora will be installed. Same process only. Let's see the demo. For that one, we required at least four CPU and LGB memory. I have already created the server. I hope you have read how you can create it. I choose tree to dot x large. Okay. And then I'm I have connected that particular instance as well. Now what we have to do, we have to download open source uh, JFrog. Okay. For that, go to Google JFrog OSS download. Okay. OSS is nothing but open source. Here we have a link right jfrog.com community download artifact. Click this one. Now here we have a Linux installer. Uh, here we can download multiple ways, either you download a tar file, either RPM, either Docker, Helm. I'm choosing the RPM, select this one, copy command, click this one, and copy a paste here. I can explain. See if you observe here, I'm using uh, here using the duplicate command downloading that RPM. I'm renaming to JFrog artifact with iPhone RPM star repo. Okay. This particular repository we are storing inside the etc m report.d. What is the uses of uh, copy moving this uh, file to here? If you remember inside inside etc m m report m repos.d, okay, we have a repo file. When you are using any command, m command, first it will be coming here in from here it will be executed. Okay, inside the repo directory, everything will be there. Okay. But for the JFrag default, we don't have. For JFrag we, default, we don't have. That is the reason we are downloading that repository. Okay. And we, that particular file move into M repository. When you use the M install the particular JFrag artifact OSS, it will be connected to this particular inside M repository only. Okay. Got it right? Again, I'm telling duplicate command, I'm downloading, but I, I given the iPhone option, I'm renaming to that particular file, rpms dot repo, and here, sudo I'm mv command using mv command, whatever is downloaded, right? that is moved to etc mrepos.d, and then I'm using m update, and then m install jfrag. I'm running this command, let's see. First, I'm running one by one command. See, if you are in root user, you don't require to use sudo, okay? Yeah, here I'm pasted here. Now downloading. If you get 200, it means the particular URL will go. If you observe here, it is downloaded. Now what I'm doing here, I'm moving that file to etc mrepos.d. Okay. Enter. Now we can verify here etc mrepos.d. Now we can able to see that JFrog. Okay. Now back to root. Now I'm using m update. Do the M update. Now, when you use the M update, what will happen? Whatever we have added, added extra red, it will be loading server level. Okay, fine. JFrag is loaded, imported, everything's fine. Here is asking a some option, give the yes. Now it is downloading. If you observe here, artifact primary, everything is importing. Okay, updating. So it may take a little bit time to update everything based on uh, updates let me see how much can we take yeah when you update just give the iphone way you won't ask yes or an option now it is uh, everything's fine now what is the next step we have to use m command to install that particular jfrog artifact to oss oss is nothing but open source okay Give that paste. I'm giving the iPhone away because it won't ask us an option. Just give the Y. Now it will be download everything from JFrog. Okay. If you observe here, it is installing. What is the version? 7.46.11. This is the latest version we are installing. But remember, in real time, we won't install latest version. We'll be use uh, LTS version. LTS is nothing but long term support. Okay, because when we install latest version, what will happen? Sometimes there is some bugs in the particular latest version. It may break your applications. I mean, applications mean if you are trying to push that particular artifact to Nexus, uh, Jeffra, it, it, it may not work properly. So better to use anytime, better to use, better to use LTS versions, long-term support, okay? Now, if you see here, now it is done, everything successfully. 
and you can uh, integrate external databases as well. It will be support lot of databases, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, MariaDB, okay? And if you want to start, can you please tell me how you can start the service level? You can use system CTL and start artifactory service. Remember one more point, in Nexus, we have to set up as a service level, but when you use uh, JFrog using RPM, we don't want to set up service level. By default, it will be set up only. Just we have to enable it. How we can do? System CTL first we will be enable it. System CTL enable artifactory. Okay. Now status check the status. If you check the status, it is in active mode. Now I'm going to start it. Start system CTL start. It is it may take little bit time to start because internally that particular uh, JFrog, it, it, it will be used the Tomcat as well. Inside the Tomcat, it will be dead by this particular JFrog. Okay, I will show you that location as well. When you start this one, okay, the configuration inside the OPT, I'm taking a duplicate one, you will show, I will showcase there. Duplicate means same server only, okay? In different tab I'm using. What the sudo, let's do, okay. Now, when you install inside the OPT, we have, it will be created one directly. We observe here JFrog inside the JFrog. You can see the artifactory. Go to the artifactory. Here we have an app. Go to the app. Inside the app, we have artifactory, we have a bin directory. Okay. Go to the artifactory again. Here we have a Tomcat. As I said, like uh, this artifact will depend inside the Tomcat only. I'm going to insert the Tomcat and go to the web apps. You can able to see that you can able to see the artifact you are set. The reason is internally that particular tom, uh, artifact it using Jeff, uh, Tomcat. Inside the Tomcat, we are deploying that particular artifact. Way, okay. And also access for also we are deployed. Got it right? If you want to check the logs, you can check it. Come back. There are a lot of options will be there here. Bin directly, config directly, if you want to configure anything. Let's come back. Now, if you want to uh, give any router information, you can give it here. If you want to, if this is a front end and event, okay, bin directly. There are a lot of options will be there, okay? If you want to integrate anything, integration. Inside, it is a bin directly only. Yeah, it is integration.sh file. If it contains the shell script, if you run this one, it will be running. Whether it is running or not, not running, it will be everything will be taking care of this particular one. Next one, fine. What I'm going to the first tab. Now, if you see here, it is started. Now I'm checking the status, system CTL status, artifact way. Okay. Now, if you observe here, it is running. Okay. As I said, like, as I said, like this JFROS, it will be running two port numbers. One is 8081 and 8082. 8081 is internal purpose. 8082 is a router purpose. If you hit the particular URL, even if you do the 8081, it will route to 8082. So we have to enable both port numbers inside security groups. You know, right? I'm taking the public IP and give it here 8081. Now you, you can't able to get it. The reason is we haven't enabled the port number, right? 8081. What I'm going to do, go to that, select the particular server. Here, go to that particular security groups. Here, go to the inbound rules. Go to the edit inbound rules. Add it. Here, custom TCP. Here, I'm giving 8081. Anywhere. Remember, don't give it anywhere in real time. We have to give the specific IP range. Okay, add. And again, I'm adding one more port number. That is 8082. As I said, we should be enabled two port numbers. One is 8081, 8082. Save. Okay. Now we can run it this. Now, if you observe here, earlier I hit 8081, but it is redirect to 8082 only. Okay. It is redirect to 8081, 82. And if you observe here, the username password, the username is admin, and password is password only, default. Okay. Password is password. Now you can able to access. Okay. If you are setting first time, click the get started and you have to change the password if you want. It should be mandatory. Okay. You have to uh, change the password. I'm giving admin. 
no it is not uh, updating okay i'm giving j from the three one two three no it is not taking so it should be two five zero okay see what i given j frog address two five eight double zero we have to re-enter same name same password only j frog address two five eight double zero okay click the next now next one if you want to set the uh, base url you can set it but i don't record just skip it just skip skip everything skip okay finish now you are able to see the jfrog dashboard if you observe here this is the open source oss is nothing but open source and if you see here down our version is 7.46.11 okay we are using open source the version is 7.46.11 okay this is the process of installing jfrog later part i will show you like uh, uh, jfrog dashboard and also how to create the users everything i will showcase later okay i hope understand that how do we install the jfrog we have installed oss open source if you if you if you want to install enterprise one you required a token key okay so in our case we are using open source in real time based on project to project will be use enterprise support uh, based on we required okay what is right if you have any questions feel free to comment thanks for watching this video we'll see you next video